Hey folks, uh, this is John Wilson, SOAR's Executive Director, and I am concluding the webinar, uh, the series on our Behavior Management Guide for Families with Strategies on Communication. The title today is Avoiding the Failure to Communicate. So uh, let's get started. Uh, and by the way, before we, we do, I, I do want to share with you that all of our webinars are available online at soarnc.org backslash webinars. And we have now over 50 webinars for you to choose from uh, on any number of wonderful topics. Uh, also, if you are interested in, uh, in providing us a, an opportunity to uh, to share uh, or, or to you have ideas for our webinars, we would love to hear your ideas. Uh, okay, so uh, the next one, uh, next slide, please. Uh, let the the first strategy is for phrase comments such as "That's not bad" or you know "To well done." Uh, and so here are some ideas. You, you can say "Well done" or "I'm so proud of you." Uh, a well placed "Wow." Uh, or you know, reflecting on you worked really hard on that, uh, outstanding, you know. And so you know, when when you say something like, "Well, that's not bad," or "I don't have a problem with that," you know, you're really basically looking at things from a, from a perspective of, "Did you not disappoint me?" Instead of, "I really appreciate the hard work you put into that." Uh, give consequences in a calm, quiet voice. Uh, and, you know, the, the first like, you know, we, we, we certainly don't <laughs> like to be this megaphone yelling at our kids. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you that, you know, I, I try and show a great deal of caution when I am working with my own children as to how I, you know, give consequences. And then often I will actually invite them to be part of that process. So instead of being a loudspeaker, you know, blaring at your kids, uh, the, you know, the, the alternative is to sit down with them. And, and if they have misbehaved and they're feeling kind of low about it, you know, have, a, have, a, you know, have, a, have an opportunity where you're, you know, just sitting with them or, or doing a walk and talk or just being calm. It, it, it will go to great lengths to help you get to where you want to be. Uh, can you imagine your reaction if you're being blared at by a megaphone versus if you are being administered you know, a, you know, thoughtful uh, guiding opportunities with your employer. Uh, would you prefer them to blast it to the to everyone and really, uh, you know, give it to you, or you know, administer you know their thoughts in a calm, quiet voice? Um, I think also when you're dealing with an agitated kid, you know, engaging them at or below eye level. Imagine if you are sitting in a chair and somebody in an authority position is pointing their finger at you and talking in a really loud voice and really kind of getting after you. How does that make you feel? When I have given this lecture, I'll, I'll ask for a volunteer and, and I'll just talk in a really loud voice and gesticulate my hands uh, and, and just ask them how that feels. And it doesn't feel good. Um, but, you know, again, if you, if you get out of below eye level, use a calm tone. Uh, it really de-escalates the situation. Years ago, I was working with a young man named Gus, and Gus was so agitated, so frustrated, you know, and he just, I mean, he was just spoiling for uh, a, a negative interaction between the two of us. And all I did was I sat down with him and just relaxed. And, uh, and I said, buddy, what do you need from me right now? And it just absolutely has the power to de-escalate a situation so dramatically and so wonderfully. Uh, eye contact. Now, eye contact is tricky, and I'll talk about that here in just a moment. But sometimes when I'm asking for instructions, I'll say, hey, you know, I'm waiting for everyone to look at me. Uh, they don't need to maintain eye contact. I just do want to create that connection. Now, um, in, uh, in some cultures, uh, you know, eye contact is... Uh, is is not you know is, is something that is seen as threatening or you know or, or we we live close to a, a native tribe and you know eye contact is not something that I can expect uh, but you know um, when when you're giving praise you know make eye contact share share with your kids uh, that you mean it 
And then I think it's really important to allow kids to disengage eye contact when being admonished because it is critical that uh, if I say, will you look at me and, and I'm, I'm administering a consequence, they're so focused on looking at me that they're not hearing the conversation that we're trying to have. Uh, uh, I love refraining from sarcasm or put downs. Uh, our kids don't really get sarcasm sometimes and they're so literal. Um, you know, and, and our literal kids uh, really, uh, really um, uh, tend to uh, take what we say to heart. And, uh, and so um, I'm gonna tell you a story of how literal our kids can be. Uh, now, it, it's a classic joke, you know, uh, you, perhaps you've heard it before, perhaps you haven't. Uh, it's, the joke is not particularly tasteful, uh, but I had told the story of, you know, uh, Ralph the Three-Legged Pig, and a traveling salesman stops and says, hey, uh, I just noticed that you, you've got a pig out there running, you know, running by the, the fence who's only got three legs. And the old farmer says, well, shoot, that's Ralph, you know, he's a hero, that, that pig is a hero. I mean, you know, back in, back in uh, 20 odd 16, you know, the house caught on fire and, and no one knew it, but he ran, old Ralph ran in there, he dragged the junior from the, from the scruff of the neck and pulled him out, saved his life. And I said, wow, that, that's, that's pretty amazing. And he said, well, just last year, old junior was, you know, messing around at the pond, fell in and, uh, you know, <laughs> Ralph jumped in, pulled him out, saved his life again. And so, uh, now, but at this point, all the kids that I'm telling this, this joke to, I, I, they're hanging on my every word. And, 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 I, and, uh, and the, the salesman says, well, why? Well, that's great, but, but why does he only have three legs? And the farmer answered, well, shoot, you don't need a pig like that all at once. All right. Now, I get it. Not the, not, not the greatest joke and kind of in poor taste. However, is what happened next that 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 uh, is important to me because uh, a few days later we're sitting around a campfire and a waft of smoke wafts into one of the, the the young ladies who's sitting at the campfire and she starts coughing and you know and <coughs> and uh, and so the counselors are all kind of hovering around her making sure she's she's okay and one of our kids was over her to say I, I promise you this is an absolutely true story. The kid said, oh, if only Ralph were here, he'd know what to do. So you, you have to be very careful with your words because our kids often don't understand sarcasm. They don't, they don't get jokes. They take things very, very literally. I think it's really important to communicate in writing. Um, and so for, 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 as you well know, sometimes uh, you know, we, we learn better visually, sometimes we learn better auditorially, sometimes we learn better uh, kinesthetically, but when you communicate in writing and then go over those instructions uh, orally, you're hitting, you're hitting both those, uh, the audio and the visual. Write down instructions and then have them record in their own words because when there's, very, there's a great deal of power that happens when I listen to what you say and then I write it down in my own words and then I communicate that back to you. Uh, I, again, I think communicating that back is, uh, is I found this slide that I just absolutely love. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you how to do something and this is what you think I'm telling you how to do. So have your child paraphrase instructions and communicate to communicate understanding and make sure that you've gotten it right. And if there are important ingredients that are still missing, take the time to kind of go back and, and resolve that so that you both have a, a clear picture of what you are uh, trying to communicate. I am a big fan of using props and charts and timers and do lists. Um, and uh, you know, we've, we've, we've had a behavior chart at home. We've, um, we've talked about what's working, what's not working. We have lists uh, that we kind of can refer to. Uh, and I think that that's, uh, that's, that's an important. I've mentioned to you the time timer and, and using a timer. Uh, I'm going to advocate again for the time timer, which you can find on, uh, I think you can find it on Amazon.com. Uh, the nice thing about the time timer is uh, as, as uh, rather than just have dick, 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 bing, the, there's no buzzer at the end. 
it just the red fades and so it looks at time from a spatial concept that really helps kids understand that uh, that they've got so much time I'm also a huge fan of to-do lists and and I will talk a little bit more about the use of to-do lists later on in this webinar uh, because they can be so critically effective to helping get things done. Uh, whenever possible, uh, don't address behavior in a group setting. You, you don't like being uh, called out in front of a group. No, nobody likes that because when you call out, uh, you know, uh, someone's behavior in a group setting or around other people, then you're going to get reactions because when you think about a kid's job description, you know, what, what's most important to them? To have as much fun as possible, to get away with as much as possible, and to not end up being embarrassed. And so when we break one of those covenants and we embarrass kids in front of other people, then it forces a reaction that we might not get when we do things the correct way, which is to, you know, to, to just communicate one-on-one. -on -one. I am a huge fan when I'm talking about misbehavior of doing the walk and talk, you know, because at that point, we don't have to look at one another. We can just walk and talk and, and move forward in a way that is healthy and positive uh, overcoming the issues and, and challenges that we may have. And the, the, mere, the mere kinesthetic act of walking can be just an incredibly uh, useful tool to helping resolve some, some difficult challenges. Uh, do not talk until you know your child is listening. And here are some components for that. Create a safe space to talk. Ask for eye contact, but allow them to break it as needed. Uh, if you find that you're talking over each other, just wait, allow them to finish, and then begin talking. If they begin talking over you over you again, say, you know, um, I, I listened to what you had to say. I've got a couple things that I would like to say, and I promise I'll make a break for you to talk as well. Um, and so you can actually teach them how to do that. And then I've already mentioned about how important I think it is to have kids paraphrase back to you. And I, and I will tell you that that this is a skill that you can actually practice in really robust and remarkable ways by role modeling. And you can pick a topic, you can practice these things uh, so that when you absolutely have to do them in crisis, when there's a challenge or there's someone escalated or communication is more difficult, you fall back to having doing the thing that you practice doing. Because again, the more you practice uh, a skill, the more you refine that skill, the more you think about that skill, the better it will actually come into play when you really need it to happen. Uh, and I, I think it's really important to remind yourself to listen more than you talk. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, I, I think back to that quote, do I want to be a sage on the stage or do I want to be a guide on the side? And if I find myself in conversations with my kids talking more than I'm listening, who's doing the learning? You know, when, when I'm asking kids to problem solve something and then I give them the solution, who's doing the learning? When I uh, ask somebody to reflect on strategies, uh, you know, to come up with strategies that they might be able to employ that would be more effective to, you know, managing anger, frustration, uh, fear, uh, overcoming an obstacle, and I'm the one who then gives the, those to them rather than uh, wait for them to hear what they have to say, Who's doing the learning? Because ultimately, you know, what you want is you want to have your kids process and talk through some of these things because it's in doing so, it's in the reflection of what occurred and what they might do in the future that so, so many incredible uh, opportunities afford themselves in terms of developing those skill sets that our kids desperately need. Uh, I think sometimes uh, we have a we have a tendency to ramble, and so you know, do not carry on a monologue more than three minutes. And what's the quickest way for you to get your message across? Be concise. Uh, another another strategy I think that that some of us use accidentally is we um, you know we 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 say the same thing but in three different ways. And when I do that, uh, I sometimes I get tired of hearing my own voice, right? And so how can I be concise? 
How can I get to where I want to go as quickly as I can in a way that doesn't have me lose my audience? Uh, I think it's also really important to encourage and reward questions. Um, you know, because when my kids are asking me questions, then that means that they're listening. And the thoughtful nature of my kids listening create an opportunity for me to really get and, uh, and determine uh, what it is that they need or want to know. Um, and I think we as parents sometimes don't do a good enough job of, uh, of really sitting back and asking a question or, or answering a question and then allowing our kids to, 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 to ask us um, better and, and more uh, focused questions about what it is that they need or they want. Because it is in the development of those questions that I get a sense of where they really are and what it is that they really need. And then finally, uh, I, I like to keep my questions that I ask short. I, I'm, I'm going to ask quick, short questions and I'm gonna uh, you know, keep them coming. And I'm gonna have, have questions that help me understand what they've gleaned from the communication because I need to walk away from the experience with some measure of clarity. So those are my tips on communication. Uh, um, uh, I think it's important to utilize, uh, is there another one, another slide? Yeah, th th this is the one. State instructions one at a time. And, um, you know, and the reason that I, I and, and also I, I would say don't give more than three instructions because if I give complicated instructions and I give more than than three or four or five, then, you know, I have kids sort of asking, what was that? What was that middle part? And, uh, and so if I straight instructions one at a time, uh, and then I, I only give a couple of instructions, it allows folks to kind of check things off and go get them done. To, to do lists also allow, you know, one thing at a time, get it checked off. Because when you are clear in your communication and you are clear about your expectations and you create parameters by which your kids understand and know how and why and if they accomplish something, then, then you can move on. Very often what, what, what we end up doing as parents is we get so flustered and frustrated with, uh, with what our kids are doing that we just move on. We just, Fine, skip it. Just move on to the next thing. But, you know, but task completion and then stating instructions one at a time and making sure uh, that, that we get things done is, is really critical. Um, my daughter, uh, she would, she would, she would uh, affirm that one of her great struggles is that she is well-intentioned and she wants to comply and do the thing that she's been asked to do, but she forgets. And the thing that she's doing takes over and she forgets to do the thing that she had promised that she would do. And so, uh, in fact, that happened yesterday. <laughs> and tonight, she and I will have a discussion about how she can overcome that as an obstacle, how she can use her phone, which she always has with her, which she always has with her, uh, in, in order to... Uh, to get things done and make sure that she is meeting my instructions and meeting my expectations. Uh, and then I do the same for her. You know, what, what, what is it that you need or want from me to, so that I can make sure that I get those things done for you? So I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, we, um, uh, it does conclude our, uh, our, uh, our Behavior Management Guide for Families. If you have not received a copy of the Behavior Management Guide, please feel free to reach out to us because we want to make sure that you get a copy of all of them there. Uh, and, and then if you have additional ideas that you would like to share with us about those, uh, happy to do that. Uh, our last webinar in the month of September will be the next Tuesday at 2 p.m. And it's going, it's called The Power of No Power, How to Unplug and Get Outside. I'm really excited about sharing with you ideas and ways to make that happen. Uh, I'm going to open up 
the, the forum right now to see if anybody has any comments or questions that they would like to share with the group. And I want to tell you how much I appreciate all of you for tuning in, watching our webinars, and providing uh, the resource and the, uh, and the gifts to your kids and the people that you, you encourage and nurture. Uh, you, you inspire me. Okay. Well, uh, since there are no questions uh, or comments, we thank you. We appreciate you and we'll see you next Tuesday. All right. Bye, everybody.